Welcome to the regular briefing session of the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners. It's good to have everybody with us today, and we hope that all of you had a very pleasant celebration of the 4th of July. Uh, the briefing today will be for the 14th of July, and we have uh, all of the commissioners here with the exception of Fleming Alamine and Ted Theodore Kaplan. Uh, we think that they may be a little under the weather, but I haven't gotten that word one way or the other. However, uh, we must continue, and to do that, we've got to turn the meeting over to our vice chairman, Don Martin. Don? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I guess I hope everyone had an enjoyable fourth. Um, a country experienced some tragedy over that time, and I'm sure we all uh, want to keep our thoughts and prayers with all the families involved in yet another mass shooting. Um, we do have one discussion item today before we go over um, the actual the items on the July 14th agenda. And I'd like to um, call on uh, Kimberly Gressley and uh, Lauren Ridge to come up and introduce our North Carolina Cooperative Extension Youth Voice Representative. So, good. Kimberly, I see it's you doing that only. Yeah. Uh, so, welcome and good afternoon. All commissioners here, I've brought with me today, Laurelyn Ridge. Laurelyn is uh, a long-term member of Forsyth County 4-H. She serves in a number of roles at different levels in 4-H now that she's been in so long. And she has a request for all of you today. And I know that you'll be happy to do it for her. Laurelyn. Thank you so much for having me here today. I would just like to ask if I could please get a picture with all of you today. Happy to do it. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be using my picture in some of my project books for 4-H at the end of the year, and I'll be doing citizenship and community service books. So I wanted to ask if I could get a picture today. Since this is 4-H, if you look over to the right, there's a photographer over there, and he's a professional. He also knows how to read and write. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we want to do this? How do you want to do it? Do you want to come down here with us? Whatever is a pleasure. What do you think, county manager? Go ahead. I, yeah. It doesn't matter. If you want to, yeah, you come just up have, here. Um, here she comes. Yeah, Miss Ridge, come up, and then we can, if y'all can stand up, but maybe against uh, under the uh, seal right there, that will be fantastic. Good idea. Good idea. Yeah. I'd love for it. Line up like you need him to. Uh, yeah. Got us? Yeah. Of course. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much you could get for that picture if you went out to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy. We appreciate your time and we thank you so much. She'll be attending a 4-H event in which she'll be showing off your picture. So <laughs> whether it's worth anything or not, it is worth millions yeah. to her. Thank be sure you. that won't be a hazard to her. Today. I was going to say, I hope she doesn't lose any points or whatever you get. I know. It. It's a cute picture. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I also think you're going to, uh, Kimberly, I think um, uh, she's going to join us at the conference in Cabarrus County. And so um, we'll have that, if you remember, they have that breakfast or lunch, and it's, it's one of those events. And so we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy having you at our table then as well. So. Thank Good. You Thank, you. Thank you. All righty. We're ready to turn the meeting over to the county manager. Good. Alrighty, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, and good afternoon, board members and staff and guests. Um, pretty simple, straightforward uh, meeting today. We basically um, will finalize the agenda for the Thursday, July 14th meeting. Um, we do, the only other item we have is just going to close session to discuss two matters uh, related to personnel. And so um, uh, at the appropriate time, um, I will, I'll read that motion as well. So, so anyway, um, we'll go ahead and dive into the agenda. Um, this is the first formal meeting of the new fiscal year, so we'll be referring to it as fiscal year 2023. 
Uh, and so, um, so we've got a fair number of items here, but it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, approval of minutes for the meeting of June 23rd. Those are forthcoming, I'm sure. They have been sent out. Sent out. Okay. So you got those. Um, item two is an amendment to the 2020 radio system upgrade capital projects ordinance to appropriate the city of Winston-Salem's share of the total project cost. Um, Deputy Manager Damon Sanders Pratt had reviewed the, the big project. This is just part and parcel of that because it is a joint project with the city. So. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager and Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman and Commissioners. So at your June 23rd meeting, you approved the contract with Motorola. And so the county will be um, in that agreement and covering the whole cost reimbursed by the city. So what this item does is it appropriates the city's portion of that uh, contract. So that amount was $8,573,503. And then their contingency will be $426,497, which makes the total $9 million, which is what they borrowed for the project. So all this does is appropriate their money so that we can actually enter the contract without just our half. And we are the administrative agent um, for the project, and so that will simplify it some, and I think that was approved by city council as well. It was, and it also was an interlocal agreement between this board and city council. Okay. That was approved earlier. Good. Any questions? All right. Very good. Uh, agenda item three is a resolution authorizing submission of an application to the North Carolina Department of Agricultural and Consumer Services Soil and Water Conservation Division to apply for and accept, if awarded, a stream flow rehabilitation assistance program grant for the watershed restoration project. And Kimberly Gressley, I believe, is going to review that. Or Damon is going to review that. Thank you again, Mr. Manager and Chairman and Commissioners. So, uh, this item is a $80,000 grant. It's 100% um, interlocal money, and it, it actually fixes a dam that the county uh, manages. So there's a series of dams that the county has and manages, and this money will help to repair one of them. There's no match required, and uh, it's similar to the project that we just completed for private residences, but this is to cover our own um, water retention facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're ever interested in um, seeing those, um, we do have this odd uh, ownership of some dams that were put in place, uh, uh, and really they're water bodies that were put in place really to support um, uh, agriculture and avoid flooding uh, around uh, the county. Uh, I've actually been out, it's been, been quite some time, been out to every one of them. They were approved under some federal funding a long, long time ago, and they just are still in our, uh, they, they belong to us. Um, you know, there will one day be an issue where the dams have uh, major issues. Obviously, this one has, has, has some issues. It's fortunate that, that we're, we've got some federal money to take care of it. Um, you know, we've talked about how to, you know, do, do those do, do those properties need to really revert back to adjacent property owners? They do serve a public purpose because they do collect uh, rainwater and stormwater, uh, you know, before it enters some streams and creeks throughout the county. But um, if you're ever interested in seeing where they are, um, we do incur some costs because General Services does go out and maintain them. They mow them uh, periodically and... Um, uh, you know, they are, they are, the, the county has developed up around them in some cases, but. I can add, they are reviewed annually by the state. And so they tell us things that, that need to be repaired on them. And this money will help us with this particular dam. Yep. All right. But that's, how many dams are there? Five, six, three? There's six or seven of them. Five. Yeah. Five. My, my recollection was that we, we had visited five of these that are, you know, there are other, there are other projects like this. Um, I think, you know, subsequent to that, the federal government, you know, really kept the ownership more with the property owners and didn't require a governmental entity to be part of it. So, um, but yeah, they're, it, it's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Very good. Thank you, Damon. All right. Um, agenda, uh, excuse me. Agenda item four is a resolution to reallocate a portion of Imprints Cares ARPA funding to allow for the purchase of a facility to house the Family Resource Center for children with special needs and expanded learning staff. You got an associated uh, amendment to the Pandemic Response Special Revenue Fund to allocate funds for the Imprints Cares ARPA capital project. And Aisha Carter, our amazing ARPA guru, is going to come up and talk about <laughs> this request. Good morning, good afternoon, county commissioners. I can get this going. 
So Aisha Carter here to present a resolution to reallocate a portion of Imprints CARES ARPA award to capital. So just some background, Imprints CARES is an early childhood education nonprofit that supports children and families from prenatal through middle school. They are currently located at the Osberg Community Center on North Broad Street and have been so for the past 53 years. On March 3rd, the board approved $3.3 million in ARPA funding to go towards their Ready for School program. And today I am presenting a resolution to reallocate $717,000 in Ready for School program funding to go towards the purchase of a building to house their expanded learning program. And this is why. Due to the pandemic, the Osberg or Osberg Lutheran has expanded its mission to serve their homeless men's ministry, causing imprints to no longer be able to serve out of the Osberg Community Center. Imprint Cares will need to move by August 2022. They have provided written capital justification determined to be sufficient on why the location at 711 Coliseum Plaza Court will be appropriate and county staff is recommending that $717,000 in ready for school program funding be reallocated to capital. Any questions? That's the old, yeah, I see it's the old Datamax building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do have a lot of questions, but mm -hmm. I'll yield my questions to one-on-one later. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Could I ask you just a, a, a related, but not related to this, kind of unrelated question, but it's ARPA. Is okay. Next Thursday, are we going to get a little overview of the total number of grants we received, et cetera, and those things? I think we are going to talk about some ARPA things at our work session on uh, next Thursday morning. I believe so. Is that July 14th? Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thank well, yeah, we can dive into um, all those, and if there's uh, additional questions, um, Commissioner McDaniel, that bubble up out of this, we can try to address them. At, at yeah, I, I just needed to know how, um, it's additional questions, but just how did this end up out of the sink of um, our schedule, ARPA funding? So is this an addition from the first phase or is this second phase? So this was approved. It, it, if you remember all those, they were approved in round one. So yeah, it was, it, the dollar amount was approved in round one. Um, and I think you'll see a few other of these as they started. Um, uh, the, the, the facility issue came up, you know, through that period. And so... Um, you know, the, the, and they they were actually pursuing other dollars as well, and you know they made a decision to 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 you know ask you to allow them to make changes to what what the intended use was of those oh, funds were. Okay, fair so enough. So really, yeah, we'll talk. You're about. approving sort of a, a a change of use of the ARPA funds, and I, and my suspicion is you'll see yeah. a few other of those as we get into them, and uh, as people uh, see what's involved in um, in Pulling off their ARPA grant, money. Uh, you know what might be just because I because I, I did get the impression it was not new money. Um, it's not new money. It's a re rebudgeting existing. But I'd be kind of curious what got not done. See, for whatever the budget was to begin with, and now we have a, an amended budget. What is being reduced in order to free up this? Because my my, mem I, my memory was I thought this was this capital project was actually in the first budget. In the first request, it may not have been for this amount, but I thought it was in this in the original budget. So Here. the original request did include a um, a capital request. They asked for um, a building as well as a bus, and then the expanded learning and the ready for school program. We only approved the ready for school program. Um, and that was because there were conversations with one of the South County schools on um, possibly having a building for them to house. I do remember that. their um, expanded learning program, um, but they're not no no, it's no longer available for use. They're going to be using it, so that's why we thought to bring it back to the board. Yeah, and that's why I said we have to have additional conversations because again, I'm, I'm thinking through like duplicate services. Is this mm -hmm. the right location for this? Mm -hmm. particular matter i mean do, will people have access to this location yes you know? it's on the bus route um and there's there's some detailed written justification in why they chose that location yeah we'll talk through it thank gotcha. you yeah. no and let's make sure um folks come in uh, elizabeth and folks from in okay. get in so thank you. no problem very good all right thank you all right we have a couple of purchasing matters um and 
two of them are Darren Ziegler's. I believe Darren's going to come up and review items five and six. Item five is a resolution awarding and authorizing execution of a contract for the purchase of a new Ford uh, F550 cab and chassis with 12 foot walk around body. Um, and then item six is a resolution author awarding and authorizing the execution of a contract for the purchase of a class three type one ambulance to Northwestern Emergency Vehicles as he's been struggling with the supply chain issues around these vehicles. I'll turn it over to Darren. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, so with item number five, and this really relates all the way back to 2019 when the board voted to expand the 09 program from two trucks to three. And when we did that, they've been on, which was at that time a backup vehicle, which was a pickup truck, uh, basically since that time. And we've been working to get that vehicle replaced with something similar, like like apparatus to the other, the other two vehicles. Um, back in October of this past year, we had priced this. That's kind of when we realized we had the money to do it. Uh, through our motive budget, and we priced it out through the HGAC um, cooperative bidding. Um, we kind of told it was probably better to, to bid this thing out and let's do our normal purchasing process, which we did. Um, when we did that, uh, <laughs> the supply chain issues had started. We, did, we actually received only one viable bid back through that process. Um, one thing to note with that bid that we feel, and, and Chris can, can speak to this as well, um, we actually, in their, their contract, normally they would put that this was a 60-day limit on this, on this pricing, and they actually left that out, and which is, I believe, would be a good thing for us because I, I really think at this point if we bid it out again, it's going to come back higher than that. Um, we went ahead with the bid because... At that time, we didn't know when stuff could be ordered. Uh, since then, we have found out that Ford is opening their bid, their order period for two weeks in October. Now, they say it's two weeks right now. We've also been told if they get a flood of orders, which I'm sure they will, that it could actually close down less than that. So there is a narrow window coming up in October to even get a vehicle ordered for this model year coming up. Uh, this vehicle is going to take a year to build. So... If we don't get in this time, we're looking at putting this off a, a full another year, uh, at least. And like I said, that's with the supply chain issue. So that's kind of where we are. And if there's any detailed information, I said Chris may have some some further with it if there's any questions. Good. Go ahead and brief item six. If you All want. right. So item six. Um, and this, this goes back to, here again, supply chain issues, but with our, um, in, in the budget this, this past time, y'all did approve uh, an expansion of one ambulance to the fleet, an additional, this would be a new purchase, so moving our number from 25 up to 26 of, of actual ambulances. Um, the, this was part of the bid process that went back, I think we're in a three-year bid period with Northwestern. Uh, that same price that, that that's, that's locked in for, for a, a Type 3 uh, ambulance. Um, I believe, talking to Steve, that they, they do have one in line that's coming. That's why we're wanting to make sure we get it uh, and get it in process. And so that right now, it was slated, if I understood, this, this truck was slated to be funded via PAYGO or as a PAYGO project once that works out. We did look. We, we've got kind of the Rob Peter to pay Paul. We've got the money in motive to cover it. That, that money eventually will be used for remounts. But we have the money to get this, this item ordered and in process until PAYGO gets worked out and then approved, and we'll, we'll get that figured out in the months to come. Thank you. The other, the other, we've got two other items. Um, they're both Kirby Robinson. So Kirby's going to come up and review item seven and eight. Item seven is a resolution awarding and authorizing execution of a contract for the repair of ambulance unit number 22 with Northwestern Emergency Vehicles. And then if you can brief item eight, which is the elevator maintenance. Piece. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and board. Um, as background on this item, ambulance unit number 22 was involved in a serious motor vehicle accident on March 1st. As a result of the accident, the chassis was extensively damaged and was, as was part of the ambulance box. The unit is not operable and needs significant repairs. And just to sort of show you what we're dealing with there. Oh, mm. oh goodness, it's a new one. 
Okay. Anyway, uh, it's bad. It had a bad day. Luckily, nobody was hurt. Uh, and I apologize. I'm thank you for that. Um, so anyway, to repair that unit, uh, we, we estimated the damage to be significant and would be costly. Uh, so we released an RFP through city county purchasing to 21 vendors and one response for those repairs was received on April 27th. Uh, the response was from Northwestern Emergency Vehicles and the bid amount was $151,024. The, you know, in analysis of that, the repairs to unit 22 are very similar to what we would expect to receive in a remount. Uh, so we really took their bid price, even though we only got one, and compared it to the price of a remount. And so our current remount price through the same vendor is $147,509. So again, those are very close, and the ambulance box here had damage as well. Uh, so the price does appear to be competitive. So if approved, we'll get unit 22 to the vendor. Uh, they do have a chassis available, or it will be available at the end of July, uh, which is good. Then they have 120 days to put that ambulance back in service. So it's the recommendation of the City County Purchasing Department as well as General Services to authorize a contract for Northwestern Emergency Vehicles for $151,024 for repairs to ambulance unit number 22. Kirby, do we have, um, were there insurance proceeds? Yeah, so that's a little bit of a, a challenge. So uh, we were not at fault in this accident. And so our risk management, as I understand it, has pursued uh, that claim. Uh, the driver's uh, insurance has accepted liability. Unfortunately, there was another private vehicle involved in the accident. Uh, so we, I believe, are second in line for funds. There was a very low uh, coverage amount on the driver. So, you know, this is, a, this is a challenge in a way because, you know, our claims budget internally is not sufficient to handle this level of repair. Uh, so unfortunately, these repairs get charged to the CPO so we can get the ambulance repaired and back on the road. So is there a chance to get uh, under and uninsured motorist coverage to cover part of it? My understanding is risk management's working on that. I can get more information if we need. Okay. We'll keep you posted. We have a number of vehicles that um, that are in that sort of situation where we've, they've been damaged, particularly with the because it's so hard to find these uh, public safety vehicles. We're trying to get them fixed as quick as we can. But um, yes, sir, we'll, I, I will follow up on that. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah, you asked the questions I was interested in: insurance and uninsured motors. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, Thank right. you, Kirby. Uh, on the second item, um, as background, General Services maintains 37 elevators and two escalators across 11 county facilities. Our current contract for those services expired in June. Um, the contract for those things really does two things. One, it provides regular preventative maintenance for each unit. It also really secures a sort of warranty-like coverage and the event additional repairs are needed. And to put that in context, during fiscal 22, our contractor completed approximately 150 preventative maintenance service calls and then 180 additional repair calls. Uh, in order to procure a new contract, we released an RFP through city county purchasing on April 4th to 14 providers. The RFP included a one-year initial term with the possibility of two one-year renewals. In response, we received five bids, but unfortunately, each response exceeded our fiscal 23 appropriation of $99,000. So in order to decrease costs, we stepped back and reevaluated the RFP and made two changes. Uh, number one, we extended the term to a full three years, uh, and then we reinserted an obsolescence clause. And so the obsolescence clause allows the contractor to charge the county a negotiated fee for repairs involving equipment that is no longer manufactured. So the RFP was re-advertised on May 26, and we received three responses. The lowest bid was Schindler Elevator Corporation and the fiscal 23 cost was within budgeted appropriations. The one year cost of year one cost, excuse me, of the contract represents a $3,900 or 4% increase over fiscal 22. Let me apologize, I listed that as 8% on the cover page. The good news is it's less. Um, <clears throat> so I apologize and I'll get that fixed. So it's the recommendation of the city county purchasing department as well as general services to authorize a contract for elevator and escalator maintenance services with Schindler Elevator Corporation for a three-year term at a not to exceed total amount of $299,083. Happy to answer any questions the board has. I've got one. How many elevators are obsolete right now? <laughs> uh, well, there, there's... What's, what's our exposure on obsolescence so, of elevators? Well, obsolescence is a part of the current contract. And so it was actually a change to pull it out. And I think that you know, we were sort of testing the waters there to see if we could get a full warranty. And it really what it did is inflate prices. And so we didn't really want to pursue that because you don't know you're going to spend that money, right? So we didn't want to pay for a warranty or an extra warranty that we may not use. 
Um, elevators at the Law Enforcement Detention Center, which the board just approved some extra funding to repair or um, uh, have the majority of those issues. And so what we do when we have an obsolescence issue is the contractor will come in and they'll say, you know, it says $20,000 part. And we say, okay, so that's the new part cost of 20,000. If you were to remanufacture that part, what would the cost be of that? And a lot of times we'll come back and say, well, you know, it's $10,000, what we think the old part would have cost. So then our liability in that, will negotiate that 10,000 additional fee, and they have to provide documentation that it's at their cost and there's no labor involved. Okay, I got and it. I'll tell you, I've had one this past year. Typically I get one good one each year. Um, and it's something that even at this contract cost plus what I, what I would expect to receive in obsolescence type of charges is still under what the other bids uh, were that we initially put out. So, so back to my original question, how many elevators are no longer manufactured anymore? So I think it's by part. It's not necessarily the, the elevator part itself. Not. So I think there are you know, big parts in these things. I can go and get you some more information on that. But let's say a lot of times like the drives of them will become obsolete. So it's by manufacturer. We have three different types of elevators out there and they're by different manufacturers too. So it, it can a little be a little all over the place. Okay. All right, so we have, so the answer is we have no idea. I'm sure we do, sir. And I, I can get that information for you if you like. Unfortunately, I don't know. Well, well we don't know how many parts can go bad that are no longer manufactured. Well, I, mean, that's that would be, I think that would be a very difficult issue. So there is some exposure. But if, if your past experience has been about, you said, one a year, that gives us an idea about what we're talking about. 17,000 is this past year. Yes, sir. Yeah. Every now and then we'll, because you'll, you'll bring items to us where we, um, where you kind of fully renovate an elevator, and at that point, you know, there's no obsolete parts, right? I mean, that's so. So we did that in the courthouse a couple of years ago. You know, we made we spent major money to basically upfit and renovate those elevators, and so, that's right. um, you know, there's places like, um, yeah. So, so you, you know, we'll. Th there's another part of that capital project when you say, okay, we just you know, the elevators in such bad shape, we really just got to start. We we need to bring them back up to kind of sure. essentially new. So yes, sir. Thank you. And you and you do have the age. We do have good data around where we are with that with our elevators. That's right. Uh, we certainly trend that amount each year, uh, and it's fairly consistent each year around seventeen to twenty thousand. And again, so that. That cost plus this cost is still less than what we would experience in the first round of bids. I got it. Okay. Makes good the, sense. Thank you, sir. Kirby, the, yes, the, sir. The uh, elevators that has the obsolete parts that they're, that's not being made, how old are they? I'd have to go back and check. I think some of these are made in the early 2000s. Um, and so I think the ones at the jail are going to be around 2000 or so. Else. You know when they were made? Probably mid-90s. Mid-90s, sir. Well, is the objective of the companies, they, they, a lot of stuff is that way. Yeah. Part, uh, getting parts on equipment that's uh, and dated. And is the uh, elevator business, is uh, their objective to try to sell new elevators? Mm -hmm. It's a great question. Uh, so I'll tell you that our, our maintenance manager, Mike Shores, in the back, they are very hard on these folks and scrutinize them closely. And we do uh, require documentation that shows where parts are obsolete. And then we require documentation to show what the new parts actually cost them. So we only pay their cost when we do upgrade, uh, which is a benefit. And then the labor cost is included in the warranty part of the contract. Um, so I, I'm sure that there have been instances where they have tried. I can tell you that we're very diligent uh, in watching them. That was one of the reasons we extended the term in this contract to three years. Because when we just said one year, well, they may incur a large cost in year one, uh, we felt like that inflated prices. So when we gave them more certainty over three years, it provides for more of a partnership. Um, and I, I think we saw that in the bid amounts. I can tell you we watch them closely, sir. Well, are they the, the kind of things that gets obsolete, according to them, uh, are they uh, a small kind of parts as, as far as uh, automatic operation? The, the, uh, the safety of the 
elevators? They, how often does the state inspect them? We, we inspect it each year, and a lot of these issues occur at the jail, which has an additional uh, jail inspection. Um, most of the repairs for obsolescence, we're not talking about the buttons or the little, you know, uh, doodads on them. These are big pieces of equipment like a, uh, you know, a controller that maybe is a almost a computer or something like that that just doesn't work now or something. I, you know, so I can get you more data on the types of things we've replaced under that, uh, but they're, they're larger issues most of the time. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kirby. All right. Uh, agenda item nine is uh, for an ordinance revising chapter three of the Forsyth County Code entitled Air Quality Control. And our air quality guy, Minor Barnett, is going to review this, and he's got Peter with him. So, Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm joined by Dr. Peter Lloyd once again today. We're here seeking your consideration of our proposed revisions to the Air Quality Control Ordinance and technical code, and specifically the section of the technical code that addresses potential excess emissions during periods of startup, shutdown, and malfunction of industrial processes, industrial equipment, and pollution control equipment. We're being required to pursue these changes, and we have been in close contact repeatedly with Region 4 staff, with the EPA, and also with the North Carolina Department of Air Quality, and we are very confident that the changes that we're proposing will be quickly um, approved as, as required and adopted. And in addition to the changes to the language of the requirements in the code, we're also seeking to remove two small provisions from the local implementation plan, which is attached as an appendix to the state implementation plan, also regarding the treatment of startup, shutdown, and malfunction and emissions of air pollution during those events. This is an academic exercise that we do not expect to have any practical impact on any regulated facilities or businesses, should not result in any increase in air pollution, and should not effectively change the way that we interact with the facilities and, and fulfill our uh, regulatory responsibilities. Have any questions? We'd be happy to entertain those now. Uh, are the folks that this is going to uh, are they aware of these changes, or will they you just change it and then they'll know? So we held a our advisory board held a public hearing, and we did not hear from anyone um, leading up to the public hearing or during the public hearing, except during the public comment period. We had some insignificant comments from EPA and the state, basically three simple comments that are insignificant. But because none of the facilities that we regulate have ever been affected by the requirements that are in place, and we don't anticipate them being affected by the requirements that we're proposing to change or the changes in the, in the language, um, I think it's an academic exercise that we're required to engage in to fulfill a requirement okay. imposed upon our agency. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, so agenda items, uh, there are a number of items. Items 10 through 15 are items from the Tax Administration. Um, and John Burgess is going to come up, but I believe what he's going to say is he's going to tell you a whole lot more at the formal meeting next Thursday, but I'll turn it over to John. You are correct. Mm -hmm. And good afternoon, commissioners. Um, item 10 is the uh, Tax Assessor's Annual Settlement, and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to provide a presentation to you next week. Uh, today was too soon for us to be able to compile all the information to be able to present that to you at this time. I uh, don't want to give away the punchline, but uh, it is good news. So, um, Item 11 uh, would charge me with collection of prior year taxes, um, and item 12 charges me with collection of the current year taxes for, for tax year 2022. Um, item 13 is a little bit unusual. Sometimes uh, you've seen in recent past, we have resolutions um, where we ask you to deny the refund request from a, from a citizen. Uh, this particular case, um, uh, 
it was about business personal property, and uh, they submitted the request to us, which really only the board has the authority to grant such requests, which is why you have it in front of you. But we have worked with the citizen to inform them that what they thought we had done on their business listing uh, was incorrect, was actually correct. Uh, they wanted us to use a U5 schedule for copier equipment, and we did, and so we were able to show that to them. And so they understand that there's no, no refund would be needed but because we have received the request we have to have this here before you so that's why we're asking you to deny that refund request was is because it would not be necessary or, or legitimate um john if i may um vice chairman and chairman i have a question is this the same email that we received um from the citizen was this the same one it's not okay no no worries thank you yes, um, and I, I don't normally uh, speak too much about the uh, regular refund request, but I did want to, while I'm up here, just want to mention, you may have noticed over the last several months that we do not send to you as many uh, resolutions that are separate for uh, approving refunds. We usually have one for under $100 and one for over $100. And we have each of those for the vehicle tax system and regular tax system. Um, and so what we've been doing of late, and we've worked with uh, the finance director and others, but we are, we are no longer differentiating between under $100 and over $100. And so they're all combined. And so um, what you'll see uh, is, and it's more efficient, I think, for you and for us, um, but you'll see some larger numbers. So in the past, instead of seeing a $10,000 amount for vehicle uh, refunds in a given month, you might have really been seeing 6,000 and 4,000, um, which still is the same amount of money, but, but uh, it's, all, it's all in one resolution. So while I was up here, I just wanted to mention that uh, to you, that we're trying to make that process more efficient for you and, um, uh, and, and still get everything done the way that we need to. Um, and then the item 15 is a regular, uh, another refund request for the tax assessor. And those were the, were the results of some um, uh, compliance audits that actually um, came out that the property owner had been paying too much. And so those are making sure that those things are correct. All right. Thank you. All right. So very good. Um, two appointments uh, on your agenda. You got an appointment to the Commission on Ending Homelessness, and then one for the Smith Reynolds Airport Board. Those have closed, I presume. And we got it. Yes, these are continued from the June twenty third meeting. Right. Right. All right. Very good. And then two reports. You've got uh, the May two twenty twenty two contribution based benefit cap report, and then you've got the North Carolina Tar Heel Legislature Legislative Conference uh, report. That is an every two year uh, event that we generally have supported the travel of the um, senior Tar Heel delegate from Forsyth County uh, to attend that and, and basically be there uh, as our representative to that. And so that request came from uh, Dr. Taylor on that. And so that is it for the agenda. The only other item I have, Mr. Vice Chairman, Mr. Chairman, is a is closed session motion, unless there's anything else from the board. Oh. Let me add one thing, because I did uh, receive a, an email from uh, Chantel uh, during the meeting, um, and there is an item that um, it appears we're going to need to add to for at the action agenda. Do you want to just mention what that is? Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Manager, um, and good afternoon, Commissioners. So we just received an email at 1.41 p.m. today from um, North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services from DSS um, stating that we are receiving another $546,927 for the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program, and it's effective July 1st. Um, and so we do need to add this item to get approved next week. Otherwise, we will not be able to pay um, water bills for those that are delinquent. Um, we do coordinate with um, city county utilities to pay individuals um, balances that are from their list. Um, but I do ask for Grace to add this item. Um, next week. Chantel, so that I have clarity. Um, so you, we pay the actual city of Winston-Salem Water Department. It doesn't go to the residents. That is correct. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else before the closed session motion? All right, 
Very good. Need to ask the board to consider a motion to go into closed session to discuss two matters to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment, or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee pursuant to the provisions of General Statute 143, 311A6. Since there's no other business to come before the board at this meeting, following the closed session, the meeting will be adjourned. I'll make that motion based on what the county manager just reported. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Well, commissioners, we've been briefed. Now, do we have anyone who would uh, suggest that we go into the closed session and adjourn? I don't. Do we need? Do we need to? We don't. We don't need. To, we're good. Okay.